We were in the green room figuring out how we were going to tie in this last session. So all I can hope for is that the, uh, the feedback is that I will provide comfort and not be too cheesy. So here we go. <laughs> and to tie everything in together since I am the final speaker of the day, no applause, no sarcastic applause, that's good, <laughs> is um, we're going to go back to session one. <clears throat> Dream. No, I'm not going to sing. Alton did that. But uh, I do have a prop, and it has nothing to do necessarily with uh, Madame Ratzar, although it's moving. So we'll see. Um, but I do have a value proposition and a challenge for each of you today. And, but I'm going to start with a question. How many, one way or the other, have been touched by cancer? Show of hands. How many of you enjoy going to the beach, seeing a sunset, going to a concert or ball game, or dare I say, maybe even going to a Broadway play? <laughs> now I'm going to ask one final question I've asked about 288 times, and no one's ever missed it. So there's no pressure, okay? But if you're a young mom or dad, and your oncologist tells you that you have less than six months to live, you have late stage cancer, who are the first people that you and your spouse are going to think of? Your children. 289 times, that's good. So I'm going to share a story with you about a young mom named Amy, 34 years old, her husband Roger, and their two children, Carly, eight, and Jimmy, five. At 31, Amy was diagnosed with breast cancer, which later metastasized. She battled for about three and a half years chemotherapy, intense radiation, and all throughout her treatment, she had three emotions repeatedly. Fear. Fear that her children would forget her. Dread of missing out on all the milestones in her children's lives, the, the concerts, the recitals, the ball games, the first date the graduations, and guilt of leaving behind her children, leaving behind her husband, Roger. Combined household income for Roger and Amy was about $140,000 a year. Yet throughout the treatment for three and a half years, it just shot that. So they were a wreck financially. So who in their right mind during all this would say, honey, let's Let's go to San Diego. Let's go to San Francisco. Let's go to New York City. Let's go to Florida. Let's go skiing in Colorado. They wouldn't do it financially. They wouldn't do it emotionally. They wouldn't do it logistically. But this family did just that. They flew to San Diego. They stayed at the Lowe's Coronado. They went to the San Diego Zoo. They went to SeaWorld. They went to Legoland. They enjoyed sunsets. Roger and Amy had spa treatments while the kids were on the beach. They lived. They bonded together as a family. Eleven weeks later, Amy died, ten days shy of her 35th birthday. Her husband, Roger, called me that day, that day, to tell me that the memories that they created were priceless, were literally priceless. And it was the best medicine they ever could have been prescribed. Now, how did I get here? My children were seven and nine when my wife was diagnosed. They were 11 and 13 when she passed away in 2006. But before Jill died, we started the Jack and Jill Late Stage Cancer Foundation, a national 501c3 nonprofit. 
And since 2006, we've provided thousands of smiles to these young, late-stage cancer families. Thousands of cherished, precious, indispensable memories. Now, this isn't a talk about the foundation. Other than to state this one fact, for oncologists to validate the medicinal importance, the medicinal impact of going to the beach, of roller coasters, of going to concerts, of ball games, of Broadway plays, for oncologists to prescribe the importance of laughter and smiling is really extraordinary. One more brief story to share. About two, two years after my wife passed away, I was making a presentation to a few hundred people on the foundation, and a couple came up afterwards, and they wanted to help me network. They had a friend they wanted me to meet. Now, I lived in Nashville. I lived in Atlanta, rather, and this friend of theirs was in Nashville. And all I knew about this woman before we agreed to meet for a 20-minute cup of coffee about two months later was that she had lost her husband to cancer. Her children had lost their dad. And that became our icebreaker. Well, a 20-minute cup of coffee turned into nine hours of conversation. It turned into three dinners, and we're married. <laughs> and somewhere out there, Karen is here. I don't know where, but she's out there somewhere. Hello, Karen. And uh, during that first evening, it wasn't a date, um, she told me about how she was coping, how she was dealing with being now a single mom with two kids who had lost their dad to cancer. And she said she was grieving in a non-traditional way. And her personal mantra became, hurry up and live. Well, when she said those four words, hurry up and live, it was like a lightning bolt hit me right between the eyes. And that brings us to the value proposition, the challenge. Because it shouldn't take a terminal diagnosis for us all to hurry up and live, for us all to celebrate family, for us all to create our own memories. So Karen has since started a, a lifestyle company, Hurry Up and Live. And, um, well, I promised I wasn't going to sing. And I don't know how people just talk about songs without singing them. So, to, to, so I won't sing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a few lines from a song called Hurry Up and Live that was written with Karen and mine and influenced by Karen. Not going to wait for my golden years. Going to light the fuse right now, right here, and enjoy the show from the front row. When I hear that alarm go off, can't wait to jump up and turn it off. No, I can't be late. Going to seize the day. And hurry up and live every moment Feels pretty good. Yeah, don't it? Tomorrow is today. Don't let it get away. Life's a gift. Hurry up and live like a rock star. Go on and give everything you got. That moment you've been waiting for, just walk through the door. This is it. So hurry up and live. So I challenge you all to slow down and celebrate family to adopt the lifestyle, hurry up and live. And the call to action is that may we educate adults and children alike on the importance of family, on the great value of cherished memories for all of us. And may we all, everybody, very good. And now to the prop in the final 10 seconds. One more time, may we all hurry up and live. Thank you. Mm -hmm.